In this week's Tablet Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to create different map types with the same data so that you know what the options are depending on your data and how you want to visualize it. I'm going to start with a regular dot map. I'm going to then switch to a density map, a dot map that uses the round function, a hex spin map, and then we'll do a little fun exercise at the end. So let's start by looking at the data set we're going to use. So in this case, we're looking at rat sightings in New York. So this data set contains every rat sighting that's been reported through the 311 phone service and has information about the date and the location and things like that. But most importantly, we're concerned about the two columns on the end, latitude and longitude. So let's go ahead and connect to that data in Tableau. So I'm going to connect to a text file. That's going to be my rat sightings data. And if you want this data set, all you need to do is download the workbook and unzip it, and you'll have the data set there for you to use. All right, so let's go ahead and go to sheet one. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the fields I don't need. So I only care about a few fields. So I know I need the borough. Uh, I know I want the, the created date, and I need to change that to a date field. And then I want fields like, for example, I might want to know, um, let's see, maybe that's, that's probably it. I don't really care about any of the other fields. So let's go ahead and hide those. And then down here in the bottom, we have these two fields that are X and Y. We can go ahead and hide those as well. Right, so now to create a basic map, we're just going to double click on latitude, double click on longitude. And then I'm going to go up to analysis and uncheck the aggregate marks option. And you'll see we get every rat sighting in New York. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color to brown to kind of go with our theme. I'm going to reduce the opacity to kind of see what it looks like. But it's still, you see, it's hard to see the, the concentrations or the, or the density uh, here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the size shelf. And I'm going to reduce these and make them pretty small. And now we can start to see a bit more of the, uh, of the sightings. So I'm going to just go ahead and keep reducing this down. There we go, so maybe something like that. And if I go ahead and show my borough filter and I zoom in, let's say, to Manhattan, we can see a bit better where the clusters are. So let me go ahead and reduce the size. The issue here is it's hard to control. Uh, you know, So borough by borough, you could sort of play around with it. But when you want to view all of the boroughs at the same time, it can be hard to kind of see the clusters. Now notice that we have one borough called unspecified and that's responsible for all these nulls that we see, this null indicator we see down here on the bottom right. So I'm actually going to edit my data source, I'm going to add a data source filter and I'm going to go to my boroughs option and I'm going to exclude the unspecified. Hit OK. So those are basically the fields that don't have a location. Now there's still quite a few and I can always just hide that indicator. All right, so that's just your regular dot map. So I'm just going to call that my dot map. And if I want to look at a density map to see concentrations, that might work a bit better for this data set. So let's call this one our density map. And in this case, I just want to, again, double click on latitude and longitude. And I'm going to change it to a density map. And then I'm going to go ahead and disaggregate the measures again. And now you can see we, we get a bit better, uh, a, a better idea of where the rat sightings are. So again, I'm going to change the color to my brown. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the size shelf and reduce the size so we can see a bit better where they're located. Okay, so if I just kind of keep going down, maybe that's a bit too far. And the, uh, the uh, intensity, maybe I could increase that so we can see the concentrations a bit better, right? So maybe that's too much. And then again, if I show my borough filter and I look at just Manhattan, we can see the concentrations a bit better. So compare that one to my dot map where I go ahead and look at Manhattan. I'm going to see a pretty big difference. So I, I would say in this case, the density map is much easier for understanding the concentrations. Now, they, they have their pluses and minuses, but in this case, it's more visually appealing to me to use the density map. So the next type of map that I want to create is a dot map, but using the round function. So let's call this our uh, dot map with round. And I learned this from a great blog post by Matt Chambers that's on the Tableau website. So I'm going to create a calculated field and call this one my round latitude. And I'm just going to use the round function 
latitude, and I'm going to start with at zero decimals. I'm going to do the same thing for my longitude. So I'm going to do the round function, longitude comma zero. Hit OK. And now I'm going to make both of those um, continuous measures, or I'm sorry, continuous dimensions. Double click on latitude, double click on longitude, and I get this, oops, no, I don't want to do that. So I want to put latitude on the rows and longitude. There we go. So we get a couple of, of dots like that, which don't look all that great. And that's because of the way the rounding is working. So I need to sort of play around with the, with the rounding. And I don't want to, um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter. And I'm going to call this my rounding uh, parameter. And I'm going to make this an integer. And I'm going to go ahead and set a range, maybe from, let's start at 0. And let's go to maybe not a 10 and step size of one. And I can go ahead and show that parameter. And now as I scroll through, nothing changes because I haven't uh, updated my function, my, my uh, calculation. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit my round calculation. And instead of zero here, I wanna use my rounding parameter. And then in my longitude, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna call this rounding parameter. Hit OK. And we have the same view because my rounding parameter up here on the upper right is still at zero. So now if I start hitting dots, you can see we start to get a bit more of the shape. So hit two, and there we go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and change my mark type to just a circle. And you'll see we have a nice little concentration there. And you know, it, so this now looks too big. So if I sort of if I drop the circles down, you know, this isn't that's probably a bit too much, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go hit undo until I get back to my two. So it's just a way to use the parameter to um, kind of help you help you see the data a bit better, um, right? So now that I have that, I can go ahead and put number of records on color, and change the mark. Uh, I'm sorry, change the color to brown. Let's use our brown color palette. And we can see now the concentrations of where the rats are. So it's not quite the same shape as New York, but it's pretty close. So if I go back to my density map here and set it back to all, we have that kind of shape where the dot map, it's, uh, it's kind of doing that rounding for you, hence the name round. So what I would do from here is I would go ahead and hide the headers for both of these. Um, I would go ahead and format and get rid of, go over to my lines, get rid of my grid lines, get rid of my zero lines, and get rid of my axis rulers. And now we have a nice cleaned up uh, view here. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, that's it. So that's all of the, the sort of cleanup I need to do. We do have one null, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the indicator for that. Now you have some other options you could do here. So if I duplicate this sheet, uh, let's see, we make them squares this time. So we can go ahead and make it square. And maybe that's the kind of view you're looking for. So maybe I could make dry this slider a bit bigger, but yes, yeah, see that it gets a bit tougher to control it when you do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and call this my uh, square map with round. Now again, this is just visually which one do you like better. So we have the circles and we have the squares. All right, so the next one we want to go to then is a hex map, hex bin map. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new calculation, or let me go ahead and name the sheet first. So let's call this our hex bin map. And I'm going to create a new calculated field. I'm going to call this one hex uh, x, uh, or let's call this hex latitude. That's fine. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my function list here and type in hex. And you'll see we have hex bin x, which uh, we pass it two values, the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So, uh, so let's type in hex bin x my x coordinates, so that would be my left to right, so that's going to be my longitude field, and then I'm going to use my latitude field for the y axis. Hit OK. Um, and yep, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a dimension, a continuous dimension as well, and then I'm going to duplicate that. Uh, so I actually it called this one the wrong name, so my x should be my, uh, I'm just going to make this one hex x, and let me rename this or edit this one. And this one's going to be hex y. But all I need to change here is the function I'm calling. So x and y. OK, so if I double click on hex x, that's going to put it in the columns. That's good. I can put my hex y in the rows. And again, we just have a single dot, which isn't particularly helpful. 
Um, so we need to tell Tableau how to zoom in on this function. So I'm going to do something similar to what I did with the rounding parameter, and I'm going to use a parameter to help me adjust it. So I'm going to create a new parameter, and I'm going to call this my uh, hex bin uh, parameter. And I'm going to leave it as a float, and I'll just go ahead and uh, let's maybe, I'll just leave it like that for now, and hit OK. And what I want to do now is I want to edit these calculations, and instead of longitude, I want to do hex longitude times my parameter, and latitude times my parameter. There we go. And then I want to edit my hex y, and this is going to be uh, times my parameter, and then also times my parameter. Now the reason I use the parameters here is it just makes it easier to sort of debug the view. So let me go ahead and show my hex bin parameter. And uh, actually, let me go ahead and edit my parameter. And maybe I'll just set it as a range from, I don't know, 1 to 1,000. It doesn't really matter to me. Hit OK. And I want to show the slider here. So as I sort of increase the slider, you see we get more and more dots like that, right? So the hex map might work pretty well. So if I have, you know, say, 270, whatever it is there, you can sort of play around with it and get that kind of view you're looking for. So I'm going to change the mark type to a circle again. And if I put my number of records onto color, you'll see we sort of have the same thing as our dot map, except we're able to control the, uh, the, the view a bit better. So if I go ahead and continue to reduce these sizes, you know, if I go, if I wanted to look more like the one we have over here for our dot map, um, you know, we could maybe do something like that, maybe increase it a tiny bit more. Um, yeah, so whatever, whatever you want to do to kind of play around with it, but you'll see how Tableau is, is kind of reorganizing things here. I can uh, increase the size a bit, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do and sort of play around with it so you get it the way you want. Go ahead and make my, um, let's see, let's make our, go to our brown color theme again. And I would need to do all that cleanup, but the easy way to do that is to go back to my round map, copy my formatting, go to my hex bin map, paste my formatting, and uh, go ahead and hide my headers, hide my rows, and there we go. So uh, that's, a, that's a way that you can use a, a, uh, the hex bin instead. So personal preference, I mean, the, the, for me, the hex bin map is a bit easier um, uh, to control the sizing of, where I had a bit of an issue that, with that in my round map. But again, this is just another way to show concentrations um, without, you know, um, um, without, you know, having to show the, the specific geographic location like you would in either the dot map or the density map. It kind of gives you more of a, or more of a generalized view. So the last thing that I want to do is I want to create something fun. So let's go back to our dot map and let's go ahead and duplicate this sheet. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and assign values to each of these. So for example, um, we want to assign percentiles to each of these views. So I'm going to go ahead and first thing on this one, I'm going to go ahead and reduce this to one. So we get something, oh, let's leave it at, let's leave it at two, that's fine. And what I want to do is I want to create a new calculated field that is my uh, emotions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to use emoticons in a data in a calculation to sort of show happy or sad. So uh, because you know if you think about rats, uh, cats and rats are pretty similar to me. Um, so and maybe cats uh, are happy when there's lots of rats around and they're sad when there aren't any. So I'm going to say if the rank percentile of my number of records. So I can just go ahead and drag that in. So let me move this out of the way. Drag that into the view. So let's say it's the lowest 25%. Uh, then they want to say uh, they are uh, uh, angry. Uh, and I want to say else if. The, and I'm going to just go ahead and copy this. Is less than or equal to 0.5. Then less angry. And uh, I can go ahead and copy that. Paste it in. 0.75. And uh, let's go ahead and make this um, uh, a, a bit happy. And then otherwise, we want to say um, satisfied. And there we go. Hit OK. 
All right, and now we have this emoticon, so we can go ahead and put that on to, um, actually, let's take number of records off of the color. Let's change our mark type to a shape, put emotions onto the shape shelf, and we get a bunch of uh, shapes like that. And uh, so let's go ahead and go ahead and assign shapes to these now. So I'm going to go to my shape shelf, and I have a color palette for cats. Or a, um, so a bit happy might be, uh, you know, maybe something like, uh, like that. Uh, satisfied might be the hearts. Um, oh no, so maybe a bit happy should be something like that. Angry is going to be uh, like that. And less angry is kind of the face there. There we go. And now you have a nice little uh, map, a uh, cat map of the cat's emotion. So if I go ahead and let me reduce the rounding. Um, so let me actually try this with our hex bin map. Maybe that'll work a bit better. So let me duplicate the sheet. And this time, let's do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and change my mark to a shape, get rid of the colors, and put the, uh, put the cats on the shape. And now if I reduce these, you'll see I can get uh, a bit more control over, the, over the, uh, the cat faces, increase the size, whatever. So there we go. So now we can see the locations in the city where the, where the cats are the happiest. So anyway, a little fun exercise there. If I turn on my highlighter, I can see where the uh, satisfied, less angry, angry, and a bit happy. Okay, so that's all that I have. Um, hopefully you learned some different options for mapping. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. And otherwise, have a good day.